This is the 30 gallon pressure tank. And this is where we pressure cast all our really large parts in. This is the 33 gallon compressor that supplies the air to the tank when we do the pressure casting. My goal is to combine the two together into one mobile unit to have inside the shop so we can move it around. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So it all just ends up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Get an Alfred backpack hanger today. First thing that we gotta do is take everything apart. So this is the old set of tanks. That's the compressor with just one refrigerator compressor on it and then the regular tank right there. So we're gonna disassemble everything and check out all the parts that we have. This is my very weak, weak sketch that I'm starting out with. Normally I start out with a sketch that's much more elaborate, but this is what I started with. These are the components, uh, additional ones that we've purchased to put everything together with for the project. This video's sponsor is Jiga, but more on them later in the video. We'll start by making the base frame on the bottom, and this is where the compressor tank is going to go. And then this is the top frame that's going to hold the pressure tank. And we have to meld those two together. This is my Smithy uh, 12 by 20 uh, mill lathe and we're going to modify some connector parts some of these cast iron connector parts to meld the top frame and the bottom frame together and the reason I want to do this is because I don't want to use unions to put the two pieces together so we're going to use these couplers and we're going to remove the threads on one side of these couplers so one side will thread into the top frame and the other side will just set into the bottom and we'll use some set screws We'll just remove the threads on the one side, drill a hole, and we're going to put a tap it here so we can put a set screw in this. And then uh, that's how we will hold the top to the bottom. We'll do these on the other parts. There's actually a one piece is going to be a T. So those are the pieces. We put those things on there, and we can slide the top onto the bottom. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. We're having a little problem because of these four way outs here. I have different sets of them. So the ones on the top are new and they have different dimensions than the ones in the bottom. And I have all four uh, of the same set on the top and all four of the same set at the bottom. And the distances are different on the offsets here. And so I'm going to take two from the top, put them in the bottom, and take the two from the bottom and put them in the top. And this is going to solve my distance problem and lengthwise here. In the back, I've already uh, gotten a different piece of pipe. That's 15 and a half inches instead of the 16 inches. And this is going to accommodate my distance issue in the back here and solve that problem. All right, time to take everything apart, essentially, to swap those two from the bottom with the two from the top and put it all back together. So, so far, things are fitting together. And we got the two connections in the front here to do. And that looks like it's going to work. Yes. Now we'll put on these side pieces. These are the, this is the part that's going to hold the lid. And this is a, a one inch tube that's going to go to the top and hang the lid. I'll start doing some of the basic plumbing for the air tank as this is going to be not so accessible once the pressure tank sits on top of this stuff and that's the pressure switch and I will have a schematic of all of this stuff a little later in the video so you can see how the entire system goes together and actually works. 
Let's put the pressure tank on. It's quite heavy. Uh, it requires both of us. It's not something I can lift by myself. And that fits on pretty good. We got some little 45 degree elbows at the top there. And I print out some 3D printed carbon fiber sort of feet adapters that just slide into those elbows. And then we have this strap that goes around the tank and attaches everything. The tank is super heavy. It's not coming off the top. These are the set screws. We're using these quarter 20 set screws uh, to connect the top and the bottom so you can see how that kind of works to hold everything together. And this is the one on the T. It's time to mount the compressors. And to do that, we had this aluminum mounting plate made and Jiga, this video's sponsor, helped us do that. So it creates some CAD and this is the part and you can see all the holes. Those are the mounting holes for the compressors. Uh, and then I had it made up in aluminum. You take the step file out of Fusion, you upload it to Jiga and you wait for your quotes to come back and you find a manufacturer that you like you have great communication with them they sent multiple emails along the way asking questions verifying stuff and then ultimately i get that bracket to come back and the thing is fantastic the holes are the right size the angles were correct and i'm able to attach it onto my tank so really nice turnaround time was extremely reasonable cost was great and the thing is super sturdy my hardest part here is marking the holes to get it to go in the tank and i'm going to use this little presto thing because it has a really long tip in the front so i can mark the metal and then drill through the uh, tank here in the back on these flanges to slip those um, six millimeter um, bolts in and hold everything together so that I can then mount my compressors in the back here. Jiga, link below for your next project. This is a dual refrigerator uh, compressor setup and I use these refrigerator compressors because they're quite silent and I like to have things quiet in the shop we put in some bolts from the top and uh, lock nuts from the bottom put the rubber feet on and this is what these WR 87 X 10 224s look like when they come so these are replacement units I put the feet on and then I remove the oil that's inside of here and we're going to replace it with something a little bit more heavy duty you want to use a non-detergent oil and this is a 10 weight and I basically put in as much as I took out and I use a syringe to put that in since there's no filter in this system non-detergent allows the particles dirt to settle to the bottom if it was detergent it would keep it all floated and you would have a uh, filter and that would filter out all the particulates but we don't have that in this system so you want a non-detergent oil I am a little old school here and I like soldering most of the connections together one of the things that we figured out is that we want to run some water traps right off of these compressors to get any water or moisture out of the system and since we're using a pressure tank and we're using urethane that is reactive to water we want to remove that I'm building the mufflers here and I use shaving cream cans uh, for that and I'm making a little adapter here to put on this is where the air goes into the tank and these shaving cream uh, cans work really great I fill them with brass wool and that really acts as a great muffler to deaden the sound so here I like to solder everything together I do have some compression fits that are NPTs um, but I like to solder as much together because they don't leak yes it's a pain in the ass if you want to fix something but it's soldered it won't leak and other than these air traps most everything is uh, soldered 
so it requires a little bit of fiddling this is one of the sides so this comes out of the compressor on the right and then goes into the tank on the left here and i'll show you how that goes onto the tank i have to uh, solder it back on there you go and i use a wet rag there to make sure that it doesn't damage any plastic parts heat that up slide that back on and then that will not leak because it is soldered together there's some connections underneath the pressure tank this is the t where the two come together before it goes into the uh, air tank down at the bottom from the compressor and again i'm using a wet rag now this i do use a compression fitting on right here so that i can take it apart I have a lot of problems with these one-way valves here that are essential to make this system work and I need to have access to these things because they often don't seal or they seal for a little while and then debris gets in there even though we have filters and somehow they leak and it's a problem. If you know of a really good one-way pressure valve, let me know in the description below and I'm going to try that out. So here's one of those uh, mufflers and you can see how much quieter that makes the compressor and they thread right onto a three-quarter inch fitting as well let's tackle the electrical so by far this is the biggest question that I always get about uh, how do you wire up your compressors and so we're gonna go over this we're gonna use this three-in-one start thing this is a solid state uh, start switch and it's quite simple actually um, there's a white wire a red wire and a black wire there's going to be a schematic that shows all of this stuff and it actually shows on the back of the package how to hook everything together these are the 110 volt AC connectors on the one side and um, then on the left here is the pressure switch from the tank I simply make a little Y connector to connect the two up to the system Let's take a look at the schematic. So here we have the 33 gallon uh, air tank at the bottom. First is a pressure relief valve. And then on the right here, we have the pressure switch. On the left is the pressure gauge where the air would come out and go into the pressure tanks. Here are the solid state relays getting hooked up to the compressors. And those get hooked up to the pressure switch over there. We have our water traps and then everything goes through the one-way check valve back into the 33 gallon tank to fill it up let's plug it in see how things work yes nice so we have a 33 gallon air tank at the bottom and that fills up to 120 psi and we use that air about half of it to fill the top tank to 60 psi which is a 30 gallon tank and so this whole unit runs together um, and I can roll it around inside the shop and supply the air as needed for the projects. Let's put on this last one inch piece of pipe and this pipe holds the lid so we can swing it out of the way uh, to put stuff inside of the tank. Yep, and that's how it opens and closes. Let's pop something into the tank to just show you the workflow of how this works. We have a, a large part that needs a little bit of fixing actually. So we're just gonna mix up a little bit of romp 3070 here really quick. We're gonna degas this in the um, vacuum chamber just to get all the air out of it. We don't need a lot. We're just fixing some little air bubbles uh, that were created in an original part uh, some air voids, I shouldn't say air bubbles. They're really voids that didn't get finished or uh, filled. So we'll take the uh, resin and we'll just fill these little voids. And then we're going to pop this into the um, pressure tank just to sort of show you the scale and the size and how we use this thing and how it sort of works in our workflow. Use a little drip hammer here to drop some drops of resin in there. So Wyatt puts the part into the tank. We go through, uh, tighten down all the clamps, get that nice and tight, and then we hook up the air hose from the bottom, and that pumps in 60 PSI of air into the pressure tank. 
and we can we have a heater on it as well so if we can we can heat it up after the parts cured we can let the uh, air out and I have videos about building this pressure tank as well and so here's the part easy to access we've got plenty of space and why it's just going to clean up this part here and that is the pressure tank build make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time i have a new video don't forget to follow me on social media at bots and design i'm now on blue sky and unfortunately still on instagram rock on don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that i have that you might enjoy